Hi guys, welcome to Colossal Mathematics class. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. All right. Today we'll be talking about the derivative as limit of change. Derivative as the limit of change. All right. And today I'll be looking at few examples on this topic. Now, the formula for this is the f prime of x is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero. F of delta x plus x open bracket minus f of x all over change in x. So you can call this change in x. I can also call it delta x. Do we get that now? All right. Let's see few examples. So the first example I'll be seeing is if f of x is equal to x squared. The second one I'll be seeing is if f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. And the third one I'll be seeing is if f of x is equal to sine x. All right. So I want you guys to follow me as I explain this thing. All right. The first one now. Now, this thing, we call it the first derivative. Now, solution. Solution now. Now, the first thing you have to know is when you differentiate this your x squared, what will you get? You will get 2x. That means when you apply it with this formula, your final answer should be what? 2x. Do we agree to that? All right. So let's do that. So we have our f of x to be equal to what? x squared. And we want to apply our formula. Don't forget our formula is what? f prime of x equals to what? The limit as delta x approaches zero of f of delta x minus x plus x rather minus f of x all over what? Delta x. Now, your x, this is standing as x. Everything here is standing as x. I get what I'm saying. So, it will now become delta x plus x all squared because they give you an x as what? x squared. So, this will now become what? Delta x plus what? x squared minus, what is your f of x? Your f of x is what? x squared all over delta x. Don't forget limits as your what? Your delta x approaches what? Zero. Now, I'm sure we all understand how I got this. You know, this is your x. For example, now, if they say this is, if f of x is equal to x squared, and they say find f of 2. f of 2 simply means what? 2 squared. So now this is f of all this thing. So f of all this thing means all this thing squared. Because they give me square. You get it? That means anyway I'm seeing x, I am squaring it. You get it? All right? So let's open this square. If you open this square, you are going to have what? Delta x squared plus 2x delta x plus x squared. Then minus your x squared all over your delta x. Don't forget, limit as delta x approaches zero. Do we get that now? So if you open this all two times, this is what you are going to get, all right? So you can see that x squared can cancel x squared here, right? So I'm left with limit as delta x approaches what zero of delta x squared plus 2x delta x all over what delta x. Do we get that? So that will now be limit as delta x approaches zero. What is common between these two? Delta x because delta x is here, delta x is here. All right, if I take delta x here, I'll be left with what delta x. If I take out the delta x here, I'll be only be left with what 2x close bracket all over what delta x. Are we getting the process? 
So delta x will cancel out delta x. So I am now left. I am left with what the limit. I am left with limit as delta x approaches zero of what delta x plus two x. Now anywhere you see delta x, you put zero, and that was zero plus what two x, and that be what two x. That therefore your f prime of x is equal to two x. You can see. Like I said earlier, you can see that that is what you have. All right. So let's move to the second example. So, see the way I did my first example is still the same way I'm going to do the second example. And our second example is f of x equals what? 2, I mean, equals to x squared plus one. Now, you will notice that if you differentiate, if you differentiate x squared plus one, what will you get? You will still get two x, all right? Okay, let me do something. Let's say we want to do for two x squared then, because I want us to be a little bit complex. So let's say we want to do for f of x equals to two x squared plus one. Now, if you differentiate your 2x squared plus 1, what will you get normally? You get 4x. That means my answer should be what? 4x. Now, let's go. Cool. This will be limit f of delta x plus x minus what? f of x all over what? Delta x. Don't forget, as a delta x approaches 0. Now, this will now be limit as delta x approaches zero. Two, what is your x? Your x, I said your x is what? All this. So x, your x is delta x plus x squared plus one. Minus, what is your f of x? All this, two x squared plus one. But you have to put it in bracket because of this minus all over what delta x. I will get what I'm doing now. All right. So that will now be limit as delta x approaches zero of two. You know, we've been able to open this one the other time, which is what delta x squared plus two x delta x plus what delta x. I mean, plus x squared. Plus one, plus one, minus minus times two x, two x squared minus times plus minus one. Are you guys what I'm doing? Now? All right. All over, all over what? What do we have? Delta x. Do we get that now? So let's open this bracket. So that'll be two times delta x squared. That'll be two delta x squared. 2 times 2x two will give us what? 2 times 2x two will give us plus 4x delta x. 2 times x squared will give us what? 2x squared plus what? 1 minus 2x squared minus 1. All over what? Delta x. So don't forget, limit as delta x approaches z. Now, some things can cut here. 2x squared can cancel 2x squared, right? 1 can cancel 1. Are you getting what I'm doing now? So, I'll now be left. I'll be left with only 2 delta x squared plus 4x delta x. I be all over delta x. So don't forget your limit as delta x approaches zero. So now what is common between this delta x and this? So delta x is here, delta x is here. So that would be what? Delta x. Open bracket. If you take out delta x here, this one will be what? Two delta x. Plus if you take delta x from this, this will be what? Four x. All over what? Delta x. So limit 
as delta x approaches zero. So delta x can sue delta x, right? And that would be what the limit as delta x approaches zero of what? Two delta x plus four x. Now, anywhere you see delta x put zero, that would be what? Two open bracket zero plus four x. And that is what? Four x. You can see that it is like what I said the other time. Four x. All right. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with your loved ones. All right. So what? To do for the last one, which is for the sine x. Sine x. All right. This is going to be taking the whole world. Wow. So we have f of x. We have f of x equals what sine x. Now, your f prime of x, normally if you differentiate sine x, what will you get? Cos x. Right? That means our final answer must be what cos x. Now, let's go. Limit as what delta x approaches zero of f open bracket what delta x plus what x minus f of x all over what delta x right now this will now be what limit as delta x approaches zero of sine what is your x your x is what this abby so sine x i you get what i'm saying minus what what is the f of x sine x all over what delta x i will get what i'm doing now now from here you can now do something now you have to recall you have to recall from your trigonometry that if you have sine a plus b it is the same thing as saying sine a cos b I don't know what I'm saying plus sine a cos b I get what I'm saying now so this is the way this one is going to be so that means if I have sine delta x plus x is the same thing as saying sine delta x cos x my plus sine no sine okay sine a cos b sine b cos a sorry sine b cos a so this one is sine x cos delta x i got what i'm saying so that means this piece will now become what sine delta x cos x plus sine x cos delta x minus our sine x all over delta x so don't forget the limit as your delta x approaches same are you getting what i'm saying now now this one is having sine this one is having delta x cos x this one is having sine x sine x now you can see that some things are common between this one i mean between this and this so we can now do something from here you can say limit as delta x approaches zero of sine delta x cos x over delta x i get what i'm saying plus limit as delta x approaches zero of sine x cos delta x minus sine x sorry that's sine x there, delta x the law of um, limit says that if i have limit of something like this with addition i can share this with a limit and share this with another limit do we get that now all right so I'm sure you are getting what I'm saying there. Now, from here, I can bring this cos x to the back because we are 
dealing with delta x, delta x. So this cos x here is like a constant because it's not having delta. So we can bring this cos x like this, cos x, and say limit as delta x approaches zero or sine delta x over delta x. We are going somewhere. Plus limit as delta x approaches zero. Now, what is common between sine x cos and uh, sine x cos delta x and minus sine x? What is common between them is what sine x. If I take sine x, then what will remain? It will remain cos delta x minus. If I take out sine x, it will remain what one over what delta x. I hear guys what I'm doing now. It is getting much more simpler. Now. The same thing I did for this place. You know, I bring cos x to this side. I can also bring sine x to the back of this limit. So this will now become cos x limit as delta x approaches zero of sine delta x over delta x plus sine sine x limit as delta x approaches zero of cos delta x minus one over delta x you can see it's becoming simpler now from here you also have to recall again from our special limits on our special limits in my last two classes on limits so you have to check that video i talk about special limits the title of the video is limits so check it out on the playlist i said if you have sine x over x as the limit of x approaches zero it is one and if you have limit as x approaches zero of cos x minus one over x, it is zero. You can see. Now, that means from here, I will have cos x, open bracket, everything here. What is it looking like? It's looking like this. So everything here becomes one plus sine x, everything here becomes what? Zero. I get what I'm saying. Now, cos x times 1, we give you what? Cos x. Sin x times 0, we give you what? 0. I get what I'm saying. And you can see that you don't need, you don't have any limit as delta x. As delta x approaches 0, no delta x here again. So that means your f prime of x is equal to what? Cos x, like I said earlier. So that is that on derivative as limit of change so don't forget to subscribe like and share this video thank you very much and god bless you